Hello friends, welcome to Kim Shastra. In today's video, we will discuss types of bond fission. Now, why bond fission is very important to understand organic reactions? Let's try to understand that first. Whenever reaction happens, you have the reactants which are going to get converted into a respective product. So always you are going to have first thing that is a bond fission will take place in the reactant and you are going to have formation of new, uh, new bonds in your final product. So that's the reason that you should be comfortable with what are the different types of bond fission that are there in organic chemistry. Don't worry much about this because there are only two types of basic bond fission that happens. One is called homolytic bond fission. Now the first type of bond fission is called homolytic bond fission. We are going to discuss this as well. The second type of bond fission is called heterolytic bond fission. The name itself defines what kind of bond fission you are going to experience in these two types of bond fission. So we'll discuss one by one the example of homolytic bond fission and the example of heterolytic bond fission. So let's try to understand. Suppose if you are having a bond between, this is a general representation I am giving you. Suppose if you are having a bond between a molecule where there is an A atom bonded to A atom. Now if you do know in your covalent in uh, in your organic chemistry the type of bond that you consider is a covalent bond. Covalent bond is formed by equal sharing of electrons. Okay, and every bond needs two electrons. So there are two electrons involved in this bond formation. Now basically, what happens in homolytic bond fission is each of this atom take its own share of electron and they break the bond. Now what does that mean? There are two bonds in covalent bond formation in covalent bond. Now when you are going to break this bond, A will take its own share of electron and this another A atom will take its own share of electron and they will move away from each other. So you are going to have this things what you form is called free radicals which forms in your homolytic bond fission. So this is called, these are called free radicals. This two A dot and A dot is called free radical. Now if you see the type of arrow what I have drawn over here, these are called curvy arrows which are mainly shown to represent the flow of electron which moves from the source of electron to the point at which you are going to drop your electron. So if you will see usually if you put curvy arrows and if it is a completely full barbed arrow it represents that there is a transfer of two electrons. If you are going to put arrow which is going to be half barbed arrow it represents this is called half barbed arrow this represents that out of the complete electrons only half of the electrons are transferred onto the respective atom. So over here we can see that in homolytic bond fission, you are putting only half barbed arrow. What does that mean? Out of the two electrons, half of the electron is taken up by this A atom and half of the electron will be taken up by this another A atom. So this was about homolytic bond fission. Now in same on the parallel lines, let's try to understand what is a heterolytic bond fission. Now in the case of heterolytic bond fission, suppose if you are having two atoms A and B bonded to each other by covalent bond. So there are going to be two electrons over here. Now in the case of heterolytic bond fission what happens is one of the atom takes both the electrons okay now that depends on various factors but mainly depends on the electronegativity of the atom suppose if you are having atom A and atom B and if atom B is more electronegative than A and if you want to break this bond between A and B then it will break or it will break in the favor of your atom B why because B is having more electronegativity than A now when this happens what you are going to have is B will have extra electron okay so that's why it is going to acquire a negative charge and A atom as its one electron has been lost now your number of protons and number of electrons are not the same and that's why they are going to acquire a positive charge. What does that mean when you are going to have heterolytic bond fission what you are going to form in your system is going to be one will be cation and another one is going to be anion. So in your heterolytic bond fission there is a charge development or ions which get formed and these ions are not the ions which are having the same charge that means there are both are not the anions both are not the cations so in total that's why it is called heterolytic bond fission now what does that mean the bond breaking is not equal it is not uniform one of the atom is taking both the electrons and one at atom is not taking a single electron now this one electron is of the a atom only but it has been taken up by b atom because it's a more electronegative so in general if i want to comment on i can say that if you want to have heteroatomic a bond between the heteroatomic atoms like for example you can take bond between carbon and chlorine. This is a bond between carbon atom and a halogen atom. So this, are, this is a bond between the atoms of the different elements. So this will preferably go by heterolytic bond fission. Now there are many factors which comes into play. On that grounds we decide whether this bond will go, will have homolytic bond fission or heterolytic bond fission. 
but mainly based on electronegative difference you can clearly say that if you are going to have carbon chlorine bond in many of the cases the bond, bond fission is going to be heterolytic this bond breaking will give you a negative charge on the chlorine atom and carbon will acquire a positive charge so you are going to have formation of carbocation and you are going to have formation of chloride ion in this case now let's try to understand how this charge development happens now friends what exactly you are having initially when you are having carbon chlorine bond number of atomic number for carbon is 6 so number of protons are plus 6 number of electrons are minus 6 ok in the case of neutral atom so total charge was 0 now out of the two electrons now this, there are two electrons involved over here one electron from chlorine one electron from carbon out of these two electrons this carbon voila electron has been taken up by chlorine so now carbon is having one electron less so that becomes plus 6 minus 6 the total charge becomes plus 1 so we are going to have positive charge development on the atom this guy electron another atom has taken up okay and if you are going to consider chlorine for which the atomic number is 17 so number of protons are plus 17 number of electrons are minus 17 total charge is going to be 0 when your chlorine is going to be a neutral atom but the moment it takes up one electron extra so number of electron has moved from 17 to 18 so it will acquire now negative charge because it is having excess of electron now it is not having the same electron as that of the number of protons that's the reason why your heterolytic bond fission always gives you charge developed ions okay or it gives you ions one is going to be cut and another one is going to be anion and preferably the bond will break in the favor of an atom which is more electronegative in a comparison now in the case of carbon radical or the free radicals not necessarily the carbon radicals in the case of free radicals what you can get is you can get a neutral species it is called neutral free radical you are not going to have any charge development why because what is happening in these cases, you are having A atom which is taking its own electron. So if it is taking its own electron, you are not going to have any charge development. For example, suppose if you are having a bond between carbon and carbon atom. Just any damn example, suppose if you consider methyl CH3 single bond CH3. This is going to be your ethane molecule. So this is a carbon-carbon covalent bond formation between these two atoms. And you are having two electrons. Okay, so this one electron belongs to this carbon atom. This one electron belongs to this carbon atom. Now when this bond breaking happens, each of this carbon atom will take its own share of electron and you are going to have CH3 radical formation. So there are going to be two CH3 radicals which are going to get formed in this reaction. Now basically let's try to understand why there is no charge development. Initially when you are having carbon in the neutral state, the number of protons are plus 6, number of electrons are minus 6, total charge is going to be 0. Now what is happening in this case, carbon is taking its own electron. So again the situation is same, you haven't accepted electron, you haven't lost any electron, that's why you are not going to have any charge development. So basically your free radical will be a neutral species, on the other hand, your heterolytic bond fission will always give you oppositely charged ions. So one is going to be cut out, another one is going to be anion. So this will decide how your reaction is going to take place. Suppose, you take an example, if you are having two reagents, one is X and another one is going to be a Y reagent. Now in X molecule, suppose if you are having bond between A and A and suppose if in, B, uh, in case of Y, you are having bond between some A atom and B atom. Now it will be dependent on initially one of the reactant, if you are going to have radical formation, suppose if A and B is going by radical formation, then A and B, A and A bond will also have a radical breaking or the homolytic bond fission. If A and A goes by heterolytic bond fission, then A and B will also go by heterolytic bond fission. The reason being very simple, your radicals, okay, suppose if you are having A radical and A radical, these two will react with each other. Even in case, suppose if you are having A radical and B radical, they will react with each other. But suppose if you are having a radical and you are expecting it to react with a carbocation or, in, or a cation or any anion, the reaction won't happen. This reaction between A and A and A and B won't happen. Why? Because this one is electron deficient entity, this, is, this one is neither electron deficient nor electron rich. This one, this one is electron rich entity, this A is neither electron deficient nor electron rich. So remember always that you are always going to have a reaction between radical and radical. So if you are one of the atom or one of the molecule is going to have some bond breaking, the another reagent will also have the homolytic, the same kind of bond breaking. You can have a bond reaction between your cation and anion. You cannot have a reaction between radical and cation. You cannot have the reaction between radical and anion. It will always be a cation and anion reaction or it will always be a radical, re a radical reaction. So in all, your homolytic and heterolytic bond fusion tells you in what way your reaction is going to proceed. Polymerization reaction, for example, mainly they go by homolytic bond fusion. Okay, so there are few parameters which are always stick to homolytic bond fusion. 
like if you are having if you are using sunlight or uv light or if you are using uh, heating your system to the high temperature or you are using some radical initiators like your peroxides are radical initiators then your reaction will go by homolytic bond fission in many of the cases it will go by heterolytic bond fission a very simple thing to remember if you are have going to have a bond between atoms of the same element or the atoms are which are having the very less electronegativity difference then it will go by homolytic bond fission and if you are going to have a bond between the atoms of the different elements or the atoms or the bond you are going to share the bond is between the atoms of the elements which are having huge electronegativity difference or I can precisely call it if they are having a non-polar uh, sorry polar covalent bond then it will go by heterolytic bond fission to understand this what kind of electronegativity difference you have in the molecule you need not to remember their exact electronegativity value but what you can remember is their position in the periodic table so if you know hydrogen is completely extreme left of the periodic table on the other side if you go to the fluorine it is extreme right of the periodic table so it's very obvious the electronegative difference you know that from left to right in a periodic table your electronegativity goes on increasing so it's very obvious your hydrogen and fluorine bond is going to be far more polar bond and mainly it's an ionic bond because of the huge electronegativity difference Thanks for watching friends, if you do have any question on types of bond fission and how it affects your reaction then do put it in the comment box, I will discuss that as well. So this is one of your another concept to master organic chemistry out of the 10 concepts that we have discussed in the earlier video, this is one of the concepts that is the types of bond fission. Very soon I will come up with another video on different concepts. Thanks for watching and all the best for your preparation and if you do have any question please put it in the comment box below. Thank you.